This is an unboxing and initial setup of an HP laptop, new from HP. Uh, we received it Thursday last week, which was, oh, what was that? December 20, or 30th, December 30th. And it was expected much earlier than that. I'll show over here uh, a little bit about the order. We ordered it November 4th for John Ed. He's been on my videos a few times. So I'll give you a quick show of what this is on uh, HP Spectre 360 13 convertible PC. Uh, we've got USB C to A adapter. USB-C to multiport hub, USB-C to USB-A dongle. These three items were accessories that we ordered in addition. And I'm not sure which of them he's going to want to use because I'm not quite sure the distinction between these. But this laptop only has USB-C ports or maybe it has one USB-A. I'm not sure what it was, but I thought we wanted to have extra just in case. It's Silver, uh, one month trial, don't care about that. 13.3 inch diagonal, 1920 by 1080 resolution. So it's got a good graphics. Uh, one terabyte NVMe M.2. What else in here do we care about? He already has his Microsoft 365 personal, so I'm not gonna be interested in that. It's Windows 10 Home, 64 bit. Uh, microphone built in, rechargeable batteries. Let's see, oh, i5, 11th generation, up to 4.2 gigahertz. And it's eight gigabytes memory. We would have selected higher if there was a reasonable option for that. Now, you, when you order an HP laptop or a Dell laptop from the manufacturers, you can always customize them to configure them the way you want. We wanted to get something that was ready-made, ready to ship. They had a category on HP's website of laptops that were ready to go. Well, this one wasn't really all that ready to go, was it? Because we ordered it November 4th and it didn't get here until December 30th. We had multiple shipping delay notifications. So let's come over here and unbox this and see what we got. I have already cut it open. I did start taking it out of the box and then I stopped saying, ah, I need to do this on a video. Slide the laptop out and there's this other piece here. Get rid of the box and let's come over to this camera. So here's this piece that's in a plastic sleeve. It appears to be a sleeve for carrying this laptop. This is, this is small and thin. There's not much space for that to open up and, and contain what you would think of as a laptop. John Ed has had at least two, maybe three Spectres already, and he's liked the model, so we ordered another Spectre. His current laptop, his current Spectre laptop, there's something going on with it and it probably could be salvaged to, to keep it alive, but he chose to just go ahead and buy a new one. <clears throat> Styrofoam off. This box is wrapped in cellophane. There's a name. The reflectiveness is all because of the plastic wrap. This is a box that has a top shell that slides over the bottom shell. Use a pocket knife. I've got a pull tab here. So 
There's the thickness of the laptop. There's a marker tab there for something. Let's see if this just continues pulling apart. Yeah. Okay, once I've had it that far open, that's another sleeve. Slides off. to have a keyboard cover or I guess that's protecting the screen as much as a keyboard a nice looking laptop here's a well, that looks like a USB 3 uh, connector kind of unusual this uh, this tab comes down in order to make enough space for a USB to connect Let's see if that's right here's a USB thumb drive yep that plugs in this looks like the power connection and then this side has a USB-C and looks like it has a, a mini SD slot and there's a slider switch here oh the slider switch is to a privacy shutter for the camera I'm saying that because this little picture image right here is of a camera with a line through it and this label underneath also supports that notion all right let's see what else is in the box important product information Setup instructions, warranty information, and some other uh, te technical support phone number. Put all that back in the box. Let's see what else is under here. Okay, nice cover. Oh, it's actually bent. It wasn't quite put together right. And then here we have probably with the I, I think this is one of those adapters that we ordered extra. There's a little notch right here which is indicating a convenient place to tear. Yeah, so this is a like a, a port replicator. What do they call it on here? Let's go back to the email. This would be that multi-port multi-port hub adapter. That ought to be what that is. And this connects to the USB-C port. And on this side, it gives us what looks like a, a USB 3 point something and an HDMI and another USB-C port. That's interesting. Oh, it's labeled here. 
It's labeled as uh, SS for the USB, so that SS just means super speed, which would indicate three dot something. It could be three dot one or two, whatever the current numbers are. I can't remember that in the HDMI. And then here this shows uh, USB and power. Oh, that actually has a power plug indicating that you could actually charge the computer through that USB port, USB-C port. As a matter of fact, when I, when I pointed to that round port as being for the power, that's probably wrong. Yeah, it looks like that was wrong because this, the, this is the power brick and it connects to USB-C. So once you connect this hub to the USB-C, the only way to actually use a USB-C is with this. So this does not provide really additional USB ports. It's just one USB 3 port in the HDMI. And this think of this as a pass-through because once we plug in this adapter to the, to the computer, there is no available USB-C port except for on that adapter. So this, this is a nice power cable here. That is a braided uh, a cable sheath, a, a, a braided cloth sheath almost. It's not a normal uh, power cable. I, I have a great deal of confidence of that cable lasting a long time. And then this side has a very commonly used port for plugging in the electrical connection. All right, what else we got? Oh, this would be a stylus. John Ed is highly unlikely to use the stylus. Figure out a way to open this childproof box. Oh, it just slides. And it's got a pull tab to pull that out. Oh, I'm inside there in the middle of that slot is apparently two spare stylus tips that could easily be lost if you happen to open this sideways or downward facing. Now that's, yeah, that's the same kind of a tip. There we go, the tip that's on the stylus and the replacement. Looks like a switch. Is that a slide? Oh, those are buttons. Those are clickable buttons. So that probably functions as a mouse when you're using it in tablet mode. Kind of seems like there's maybe something else underneath. Instructions. Then next, there's that notch for opening the bag. So here's a hub, a USB hub. This side plugs into the USB-C port and gives us three USBs. So I could see the possibility that in some situations, John Ed could be wanting to use either one of these types of adapters. This looks like the last one. And this is the third USB adapter. This 
So this is from US, USB C to USB 3. This would be simpler to carry if he was only needing one extra USB port. So there could be environments for John Ed that any of those may come in handy. All right, next, let's power this on. Actually, I can leave that all wound up and just open up this side. That's going to connect to the USB-C port. I'll pause the video and go around and plug that in on the other side of the desk. And here goes the first power on. I'm thinking that looks like a fingerprint button rather than a power switch. Got a light. Where's the on button? Oh, I think it's coming on. Oh, no, that was my hand on these cables, scratching against the desk. Yeah, I'm gonna try opening the lid while it's plugged in. Still nothing. Pausing video. Looking at the instructions. All these items labeled as to what they are. Over here is the word power button and it's number seven. On this side I see that seven is towards the back corner on this side. So that, oh I see. That is on this 45 degree corner back here that's not visible from the front of the computer. So from the front of the computer, it's this corner back here has a physical power button. And it has a light after I pressed it. You can see it lit. And we can see the background on the keyboard. And the HP logo, spinning circle of dots. It's absolutely quiet. I don't hear any fan noise. Click the microphone to stop Cortana. The screen still is going to cycle through the messages before I get anything to click on. Enough intro, let's dig in. I'm going to select United States. US keyboard, yes. When I add a second keyboard, I'm going to click Skip. Then it wants to connect me to Internet. There's a link over here for I don't have Internet. I'm going to click on that. There's more to discover. This is our trying to connect, uh, trying to convince us to connect. I'll click on Continue with limited setup. It's a Windows 10 license agreement. I'm surprised. I thought this was going to be Windows 11. Click Accept. That explains why I was getting those Windows 10-like 
uh, startup screens. Who's going to use this computer? The name is John Ed Clark. He uses the full name for logging in. Click Next. No password for now. Here we have the privacy selections. I'm going to do diagnostic data only. And I'm going to I'll find my device. Yeah, I'm going to leave that on. Inking and typing, I'm going to turn that off. Click Accept. And then this is Cortana. I'm not going to click Accept. I'm going to say Not Now for Cortana. That would ask for additional information. This is Register and Protect. I'm not going to fill in any information there. I'll click Next. Register and Protect. I'm going to say that HP cannot use information. HP may not use information. HP may not use contact details. Click Next. Almost done. We just need to get a few more things polished up for you. Windows will be all yours. Looking forward to helping out. Once this gets to the desktop, I am going to connect to the internet and start Windows updates. And I'm not going to capture that on this recording. This is almost at the desktop. This might take several minutes. I don't think it's going to take several minutes with this computer. I'm going to go ahead and punch over here to this camera and say the next piece that I'm probably going to record would be doing the initial setup and configuration after all of the updates have installed. So that's it for now. <clears throat> this is still on the several minute screen, so I'm going to go ahead and end the video right there. Hope this was useful. Catch you later. Goodbye.